Hey there, so if you watched our, uh, our Epic Mega kind of like uh, podcast that we did the other day, uh, yesterday, right? Yes. Yeah. We did like, we talked about uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween. We talked about the whole Halloween franchise, but we kind of focused a bit like we got on a rant on the Rob Zombie Halloween 1 and 2. So that, gave, that got me and Matthew thinking, and we kind of decided that wouldn't it be cool to go back to look at all those reboots? Because there was a time, and it's still to this day, reboots get like a really, a, re a really bad rap. We look at we look at the, the original movies through rose-colored glasses. We have certain views on it. So we thought we'd go back in, we'd watch these movies here, uh, kind of through new eyes, kind of really take the originals out of play as much as we possibly can uh, when we're doing the review, and actually go back over. So this is the uh, very first uh, edition of Reboot Theater. We are going to look at the uh, reboots from the you know the, over the past few years and. Uh, Try and give them the the chance that uh, we think that you know maybe they deserve, or the thrashing that uh, that that they sometimes will deserve as well. And tonight we're going to start that off with a Nightmare on Elm Street. I think we should get to the review. After many years of it being like talked about, uh, in 2010, Platinum Dunes finally took it upon themselves to uh, get Samuel Bayer to go out and direct a uh, kind of a remake, reboot, reimagining, retelling, whatever, of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. This was going to be really, really hard to do since, unlike many of the other franchises, this, the character here, as you know, we get Kane Hodder as, you know, as Jason and stuff like that, but there have been other Jasons, but... He was, and this is an acting role too, so you needed somebody that was going to have, be able to take over for Robert England and uh, kind of make it their own and still uh, make it like knowledgeable, make it make it known enough that this character here was uh, was still the, uh, the Freddy Krueger character. This was not an easy undertaking to do, and I cannot imagine how much time that it took. The movie starred uh, Jackie Earl Haley as, uh, as Fred Krueger. And uh, we had Rooney Mara, Mara playing uh, Nancy Thompson. Uh, we also have uh, Katie Cassidy playing Chris, right? Yeah. Uh, Kyle right. Gellner is Quentin, who pretty much takes on the Glenn role of, uh, of this film. Uh, we had uh, Thomas Decker in it for a small role as well. Uh, Clancy Brown's in the film. Uh, always great, because Clancy Brown's great in everything. Connie Britton, who you guys are pro probably going to remember for the first season of uh, Mar American Horror Story, where in, in Murder House, she wanted to do Nashville, but uh, if you're a horror fan, you're watching this, you probably remember from Murder House. She was the uh, wife and the, kind of one of the lead stars in that as well. So we had a whole all star cast. How did it turn out? Well, we'll start at the beginning. The opening sequence with the uh, kids in the playground and kind of the blocks that uh, spell out the word stop, right? Yeah. Uh, really well done. I mean, the cinematography, we're not going to be like, harping on the cinematography on this one because we can't because the cinematography in this film is actually really really good I'm gonna go on record right now saying the first time that I watched this movie here A Nightmare on Elm Street I pretty much hated it completely across the board same there were things that I really didn't like uh, this is such a cool like a little ticker case <laughs> uh, I could play with that all night but we get into it. And we meet. And we kind of meet. Uh, we meet Dean, right? Dean, right? Away. Is it Dean? Dean. Yes. We meet Dean. Dean right away. That's played by Thomas Decker, uh, and is a character that has to die. You know, you know he's going to die. But to be honest, uh, Thomas Decker is an actually like actor, and he for the tiny amount that he's in the film, he's really good. And you kind of like don't want to see him die. So th that's good because you get you want an actor that you're going to kind of feel bad for. And I did feel bad. To see Dean die. We didn't get to learn much about Dean or any, or like you know much of his character traits. It's he it just uh, he played it really well. He he did a really good acting job over here. Uh, we get to see like Dean trying to like uh, he's working at this. Uh, what was not working? He's at this cafeteria 
his cafeteria. Cafe. He's, he's working he's at this cafeteria. cafeteria. This is an entire different movie. You guys have never <laughs> seen this movie before. It's my version. No. Yeah. It's uh so basically he's at he's at this cafe at night, he's drinking coffee, you know he's trying not to sleep. So anybody that's seen Never Never Street before he knows this guy is being you know, being inflicted by those these Fred Krueger dreams. Freddy Krueger. And uh we kind of see like uh, he falls asleep for a second. We kind of get like a uh, a glimpse into the dream world. We hear we see the uh, the Freddy claw come up for the first time, and it does this kind of like he does this kind of snick type. Can you do it? Um, I did it. Can't do it very fast. Yeah, yeah. kind of thing. But this is all for him, right? He's red, and ah, it looks like he's doing it with the front tail. I don't. But it's kind of cool. It's way, the way it's done. It's like neat. Oh, wh one thing you talked about when you see here Robert England. And his portrayal of Freddy, and I'm gonna try and not to put too many like uh, uh, kind of like comparisons to them. But in this case, this this is good. This is not gonna be a bad comparison. Uh, is that when you use the glove, you use it come almost like an extension of yourself or something that they that has become very used to and very uh, very good with, and uh, it shows. And like right from the beginning, he seems to be comfortable with the glove. Um, seems to do a really good job with the uh, with that, and yeah. You get it's a good start for the film. It's uh it's a good way to do it. Yeah. Uh, I can't fetch you with this. We get to our final <laughs> finally get to the uh, to the death sequence in the film, the first death, and it is uh and it is Dean, of course. Uh where Freddie pretty much and I was kinda disappointed in the fact in that he, he kills him in a when I first saw the film, in a pretty standard just slash across the throat type of way. Now watching the movie again, I get it. I mean it makes sense due to the fact that Dean looks like when we are seeing it in the real world, like he's committing suicide, mm -hmm. and it uh and it helps out in uh in his plans and what because basically Dean is kind of the catalyst to uh, like he's been working you know we find out later on in the film that he's been working to uh, really get people into uh into this uh he's had plans but uh WWE actually uh. <laughs> Cat, you're throwing me out here. <laughs> but uh, basically, no, no, no. Go, go sit down. Uh, oh, <clears throat> oh. Oh. Okay, this is our smoky s sequence. Of the, the other of person the with claws today. Yeah, the real nightmare character. Uh, okay, you have to move away from the camera. <laughs> All right. Uh, progressing from where we were, which is the beginning. You can take scene. over for a bit. Um, <clears throat> we get our pseudo protagonist I'll say pseudo for specific reason uh Chris played by Katie Cassidy Katie Cassidy thank you I was gonna see Laurie Strode that is the opposite <laughs> of what happened um uh and she is awesome it's Katie Cassidy she's known for these roles she is great and she's the black canary so she probably beat him up uh you know Katie Cassidy had done stuff like Harper's Island before uh, she'd also done like uh, wasn't her isn't her in One Stranger Calls too, in like one sequence doesn't she kill it and uh, she's come to the door in Stranger Calls, that's her I right. I can't remember. I'm gonna check it out in a second. I have my um, iPad here to check that out. And I know she's the uh, she's one of the girls in the movie uh, Black Xmas too, isn't she? Oh yeah. We'll get to that one uh, during uh, near Christmas time for our reboot theater. We're gonna be doing a lot of this stuff. Um, suffer through it, dude. <laughs> Uh, you you suggested it tonight, and I was like, no, wait until Christmas. That makes much more sense. Yeah, she did uh, When a Stranger Calls. She did Black Xmas. Uh, of course, Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, she was in The Lost, Jack Catch Me's The Lost, which isn't a bad film. Um, she becomes our... Well, she sort of becomes our, like, pseudo-protagonist, but at the same time, we do we are introduced to the actual protagonist of the film. And, well, two protagonists of the film. Nancy and... Mm -hmm. Quentin. Quentin. Uh, both we meet at the beginning sequence. There seems to be more of a focus on Chris at the beginning, which is actually nice, which we get I, st I still dislike the fact that she's not our protagonist, because she's an awesome actress, and she's great. Uh, but I like the fact that this time around we actually get to, like, I didn't, like, you don't really care when, what's his name from the, from the original, the guy who gets framed for Chris's death in the original? But let's not get there yet. We'll, we'll get to that part. Like, no, uh, no, I know. But I'm just saying that these characters, you find, you find them feel more like bad about him getting framed or dying. I do, actually. I mean, uh, well, in the I original. Mean, 
Yeah, Koji or whatever his name, whatever his name was going at in the movie at the time was. In the original, yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't care well, as I much think about we him, him but like, I really do. Like Nancy is played this time by uh, Rona, right? Mm. Nancy's a lot more. Uh, what's the word? Uh, well, I think it's Rune Mara. I think Rune Mara plays her. So yeah, it's Rune Mara. Mm. Rune Mara plays Nancy in this one here. We've got uh, Kyle Gunner, who's been in a lot of stuff. Rune Mara, you probably are gonna know from the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Like that's that's what most people know her from. Yeah. Kyle Gunner did a lot of stuff. He was Impulse, you know, the original Flash for uh, the series Smallville. Uh, he was known for Veronica Mars. He did a really great job on that show. Uh, outstanding actor like uh, in, really in that cool. role. I like Kyle Gellner. I've always liked him in, uh, in most of the things that I see him in. And he doesn't like, uh, he doesn't really disappoint here. He does a great job here. We also got Clancy Brown playing his dad and the principal of school and that's some pretty cool acting chops really right there. I kind of wish more Clancy Brown was in it though. Yeah, fair. I know. I, but that's the thing. When you, he's, he's that good of an actor that you don't feel like, oh, it's a waste to roll. You just want to see more. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, well, yeah. You just, yeah. It's, it's kind of the actors to be honest, want to see I could have done without the, without Nancy's mother's, like, I tried to shelter you. If I got you more. Like of, Connie Britton. I like Connie Britton. No, she's, she's cool. Really she's, she's cool, but, like, I feel like we should have seen more of, of, uh, Nice Brown. I feel like that would have been his. You don't get that too much with the with the Nightmare Elm Street films because it, the whole like no we did it uh, we think I think about it every day but I was protecting my kids as opposed to the like mother being like what we did it what no in the Nightmare Elm Street films the the parents are dicks all except yeah. for the dad that starts out as a dick in part four and actually becomes a pretty decent father yeah. in the Dream Child. They, this, they're known for being dicks. However, I don't see... I know that they're trying to portray Clancy Brown as being an ass, but I never well, do I see him as being an ass. No. One, he's the, well, he's the guy that leads the charge. Against, uh, against, you know, he's the one that won't really wants to like burn the hell out of Freddy. He wants to kill Freddy. He's the guy that, that starts it. But this guy is one... His, his kid was, was abused by Freddy. Uh, as a parent, yeah, I'd do the same thing. But here's... It's not only that. He is the principal of, of the... High school. He's a guy who protects, kids. who protects kids. He's a guardian of, ch of children, and it, it makes you, perfect sense for him to be the leader to go out there and uh, and actually like like burn the hell out of. You said out of Freddy. during the film that you like you wanted to see like something exploring more about like survivor's guilt, like from one of the parents. I think it would be good, and I think that like he in this film could have done that because he's like both aggressive. You can see it. he mentions that he has he every day thinks about the idea that he could have burned an innocent man. But he also talks about what it is, like what it feels like to fail. We'll get to how protecting. that doesn't make sense later on, though. No, absolutely, <clears throat> yeah. But uh, but overall, the first so the first sequence of the film, the first like part of the film, uh, the first like fifteen twenty minutes, really, it's it's Chris's story, yeah. and we're seeing Chris slowly unravel certain things that don't make sense. None of these people that went to high school together ever remember like being together when they were younger. Yet she she stumbles upon this picture of her. And Dean, when they were children, she's never remembered being with Dean as a uh, as a child. So that, that was kind of like a kind of a what uh, kind of a WTF moment mm -hmm. uh, in the in the film. And we and it follows Chris's journey. We get to the first really like stumbling block within the film uh, for me anyway is Chris's death. Uh, it yeah. is done really badly. Uh, the original scene with Amanda Wise, who uh, I'm gonna put this out there, who have met. Uh, at a convention, and she is the sweetest girl, by the way. Uh, if you ever go to a convention and you get to meet uh, Miss Watts, go do it. She is really nice. She was fantastic in, in the Never Elm Street original film. She was great in the Hot End of the series. Uh, just an amazing lady. Uh, but anyway, let's get back to this. because. But I had to say that. She's awesome, and I got to meet her. Uh, <laughs> I had to say that. I just had to. Uh, I was like, you know, I didn't get me the last. I meant Goofy. <laughs> <laughs> He's not a scream queen. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, so uh, it's it, she. It's kind of like pinball on the. It's like it's really kind of clumsy. Yeah, it's clumsily done. I think it's meant to be brutal, but it make it those the Rob Zombie way of like looking brutal. It it's sort of half does Rob Zombie way of like looking brutal, but in actuality it looks silly. Uh, and then. When they can go for kind of the more brutal death sequence, when she gets slashed, 
uh, rather than kind of going over the top. And Elm Street is a movie where you can go over the top, where you can't yeah. have more of the blood splash and splatter because it is kind of a it's a nightmare type of realm. It's the type of thing. I know they're going for a grittier aspect of it, but this is the one place where it really doesn't follow through. Uh, the death is really not well done. Her it it just doesn't, and it's such a uh, right up to this sequence. It is so good. I mean, uh, there's this kind of like this uh, hide and seek game that he's playing with the kids and he's playing with her when she enters the dream realm and it's really really well done so that when Freddy comes up and, and grabs her it's good it's really good and I was really impressed up to that sequence and then when she's lifted up it takes it takes you completely out of the film yeah that was my thought what do you well, think well this goes back to my to what I said about that you didn't agree with me on while I was watching the film uh, I like the film more when it's doing its own thing a little bit I feel like some of the callback scenes, not the callback lines, but the direct callback scenes, like they, they put a light back on the originals and that makes me go like, yeah, that was a good film. This is... Well, you know, so you think it's doing Ghostbusters? <sighs> where they're taking scenes from the original and not see the original and it's actually taking it out of the modern day. Well, like later uh, on we get, we get the, the but, body bag scene. But I think the best part, the best way to... Like, to, to judge that is to gauge that is if that wasn't in the original yeah. if there was you never had that scene to go by in the original would would you like it anyway or would you uh, still think it was like a badly done scene I, well, I still see it as a badly done scene so even that if scene, yeah. that was not like we'll get to the bite of scene scene after but in, in this case it, when you got to put it in its own merit when we, we can't say okay this was how the original was done this is how this one should be done we say okay this is like a concept of a nightmare film. Have a nightmare well, can be done. You know it was what? a badly done death. It was just badly done. Yeah. No, that death was like clearly badly done. It's later scenes where... She deserved better. She was a really good actress, and she deserved better than that. Yeah. Though I will say that this, the direct proceeding to that... Was incredible. With her being chased, and then she, like, she wakes up, it looks like, and she looks, and she sees that her, uh, her boyfriend, whose name I don't remember... Jesse? Jesse? Yeah, it's the same yeah. as, the, as okay. the character from the original. Uh, Jesse, uh, she sees he's there sleeping. And she gets up. She goes to the mirror, and you're waiting for like something to happen. She washes her face. And she's fine. And she goes, and she lies back down. And then immediately, yeah. in his place, is uh, Freddy, Freddy. And he's like, gotcha. Found you. Because uh, he does this kind of like, you know, kind of like, eight, nine... Ten, I'm coming. I'm gonna find you. And he gets there, and, uh, and she gets in the bed, and it's like, found you. And it's kind of like it's a really well done. Yeah, sequence. it's really well done. It's just her death that's. Yeah, it's just that see that thing. Everything for seeing that great it is is like just just does some great stuff. I was gonna say there's a lot of deaths that disappoint, but there's not that many deaths in this film. No, there's not actually. Actually, uh, there's only three major deaths. No, Nancy kind of like we meet. We Jesse goes to Nancy. And it's actually pretty well done. Like Jesse is done differently than he was done in the uh, in the first film. Uh, so, uh, but I do like this Jesse. I think he's a likable actor, and he's a yeah. likable character. Uh, he does a really cool job in the film. Uh, when he goes to Nancy, it makes sense, and it, it progresses the storyline. Basically, we have been following Chris. Chris passes on. Uh, Nancy could go into like deep depression, whatever, but. The fact that Jesse kind of goes there and Jesse becomes a sort of a kind of link, like extra link between between Chris and Jesse. And basically what Chris has been investigating with the fact that Jesse comes to comes to Nancy, it actually kind of helps spark uh, what we're going to see next. The uh, Nancy kind of taking up the torch and investigating and getting uh, Quentin to help her out. I will say uh, I the, like the fact that there's the real more investigation in this film too. Like, I mentioned just a second ago uh, that there's only three major deaths in this film. Uh, and that's accent accented by the fact that the majority of the plot is finding out what happened when they were younger. Mm. Most of the dream sequences and the way that he's doing stuff isn't just him playing with them. It's giving them hints to where to go, what happened, trying to make them remember what happened. Because there's another thing that... Always was kind of, yeah, got a, a cat jumping around all over the place. Did you find some catnip somewhere? I have no idea. Um, is in the, in the original film, uh, like, Freddy is, like, taking, the, like, attacking 
a group of friends for a reason. The reason being that all of the parents of, uh, what's the name of the town again? Springwood. Springwood uh, killed him. He's a uh, but like the fact that he's targeting these kids specifically is kind of odd. In this one, it makes sense a little bit more. Not that I'm saying that the, this is a better no. film. No. We're but I'm saying that it. I do like elements like the fact that there is a reason that he's going after Nancy and them. There is a reason that uh, that he shows up. It's not just he enjoyed a boiler room. And unlike uh, the Halloween remake, uh, this is one where finding out a little bit more about the killer, finding out more reasoning, doesn't make him less scary. Well, here's uh, the thing. That's what, like, going, like, there's no way to make Freddy less scary at this point. Freddy is the one that talks. He's the one we know everything about. We know who Freddy's mom was. We know who Freddy's dad was. We know how he was born. We know how he got his powers. We know literally everything about but Freddy. But this already. is a restart. Now it can, it can be. You can say, you know, one keep like in the original movie. It was kept dark and kept mysterious, and it did really it did a really great job. But Wes Craven's in Nightmare on Elm Street is hands down one of my favorite films of all time. Period. Uh, and the and he does manage to keep Freddy scary by keeping him in the dark. Now, they could have over-explained Freddy in this oh, yeah. one here. They could have. They very well could have. Did they do that? They said there was dream demons or something. Yeah. No, they could have said, <laughs> no, they'd never do that. That just wouldn't make any sense. They could have that said. would be like putting Roseanne, Roseanne Byer and Tom Arnold in the film. That, no, but, but nobody would ever do that. As a fan. That would be like using a, the Nintendo Power Glove. Uh, this, I noted mm. this at the, you might not know this because it was at the very end of our th almost three hour long uh, podcast uh, of the big three, uh, <clears throat> Friday Thirteenth, Halloween, and this one. Uh, this is my favorite of the series. This is the one I've watched the most. This is, is the one I know the most about. You mean it's the, your favorite franchise? Franchise, yeah. Yes. Because you said favorite of the series, like this was your favorite. The, film. This Seriously. was my favorite of the random horror movie series. <laughs> no, um, this is my favorite series of them. Uh, I went middle of the the movie. I I I mentioned a thing that's referenced in four five. And to some degree, six. And you looked at me you're like, well, I'm like, what? You're like, what? And I'm like, it's a really important mythology thing that has to do with these films. Oh, I yeah, you mean these, the Guardian thing. The yeah. Gatekeeper yeah. Uh, thing. It's because of the Dream Master being the Guardian Light and him being the dark side that comes. I love the mythology of those films. I don't like six. Uh, well, well, no, don't go spoiling it too much. We're going to be doing a franchise overviews. Ooh, sorry. <clears throat> Nobody likes six. It's not a big surprise. <laughs> but, uh,. Uh, there is a lot of ways to over-explain. I'm sure Richard Talley's mom probably tells her that she likes six, but really doesn't. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of ways to over-explain Freddy, but I've always really liked the fact that he's the one that has, he's the one that deserves some sort of explaining in mythology. He's the one who's the most open, the one who isn't mysterious and in the dark. Well, and... that's the thing that I, that, that I kind of wanted to get to, mm. is that basically we've got, you. what I meant is basically you're, you could really over-explain this guy, yeah. like Rob Zombie did, and wanted to get into the psychosis. Yeah, we could have had like but an hour about do him, that. like being before the thing. We only learn what's there to keep him chilling, to keep him terrifying, and, and that's the going, fact that he, he is almost a chameleon in the way that he does. He flips a switch from looking like this amazingly, like sweet, like fantastic caretaker, to being this really like torturous kind of like like really like dwelling and enjoying the way that he that he that he tortures and that he like he doesn't just it's not he's not just there to kill he is in it for the for the long haul that's another he thing loves that I like torture. If, especially if we're going to compare between uh remakes we we, should, uh, well, we can't keep comparing no no i'm not comparing it to the original i'm comparing yeah. between remakes yeah halloween i am forced to sit down and watch me haired tiny <laughs> Michael, cry about his mom. In this, Freddy is goading you on. He wants you to learn what happened. There's no point in time where he isn't in control of the situation. We're able to stay in the present and get little tidbits about the past because he wants you to know, not because you're being forced to know. Pe the characters are all about trying to figure out what happened, why he's after us, 
as opposed to, well, this is why. Hey, I'm for, like, just take a look. Sit down and watch what happened. <clears throat> it's given you little by little, which is actually important, for the ending. Yeah. And the big twist. And right? here's the thing. For most of the time that the first time I saw this movie, my biggest, one of my biggest problems, my biggest problem I'll get to right at the end of the film because I don't want to talk about like certain aspects of Freddy until the end of this, this review. Yeah. Uh, that's the look and all that. We'll, we'll get to that at the end of the review. Uh, now, I hated the fact that he was that he was guilty. I hated the fact that he was guilty, and I thought, you know, wouldn't it be a great twist for him to have been innocent and them, them to have done it? And like, this is what turns him. This is the genesis of what turns him. Makes perfect sense. But they it, set it up so well. Ex, un, but un, yes, but here's where where I think we were both like may have been wrong. Mm -hmm. And and Jess Kane Moon, you're talking about that. Is that if we get we we don't have to see Freddy's like his childhood or if his mom was mean to him or if his dad uh like was like a wanted to people. Yeah, or whatever. But all we need to know is that he's this like twisted mind game playing type of character. And we get that. And mm -hmm. when I originally saw this movie, I thought, you know, a great twist would be if he wasn't guilty. However, that would have killed what he does. And what he does is basically screw with the minds of... Of, of them you know until he can I'll, get him in that place so that he can relish it and that's the thing Freddy relishes it and even in the original series Freddy relishes and he plays with them and we're finally getting to see that we're getting to see kind of like where it's going to another level where he's actually making them feel guilty like he's killing their friends and yet although he's killed a couple of their friends they still feel guilty that they may have been responsible for killing him he it's not like he's hiding it from them he is slowly letting them, letting their memories yeah. kind of like unravel and reveal itself. I, I will say. And it really shows it's, how twisted a character uh, that this Freddy Krueger is. And for me, that really, really stood out. Yeah, I, I still think the, the guilty, the innocent thing would be really, really cool. I really like the idea of it. But I will say it's, it's foreshadowed well enough. We know, like, his big plan in the end is foreshadowed by things he states earlier with his knowledge of how long the brain lasts without the heart. That's foreshadowed there. He's dropping hints, but he doesn't seem to want to kill anybody until they get to the place. That's why he plays with them so long, because he wants them to feel guilty and then realize it's not even their fault. But he does it in a specific order so that to get the right person into that yeah. into that spot, and that's that's one of the things that I that I really like about it. When he tells that guy, like the you know you, uh, you know the, the brain still has activity seven minutes after the heart leaves the body type of thing. Um, basically, what you're saying with that is uh, he's telling him when it's too late for him to say you know this you know the, this dude <laughs> this dude is, is is what this dude's going to do. Yeah. Like, even if the guy figures it out at that point, it's too late. The guy's dead. Yeah. Um, and if he was innocent, let's just say he was innocent, okay? Oh, God. <laughs> All right. The one has started to do things. Xbox. Let, let's just let it go. It'll be fine. All fun. right. Didn't work that time. Usually it does. Uh, so, basically, he, that's what he does. He, he kind of, if he was innocent, yeah. if he would have been innocent, then the whole aspect of it, then this is just a revenge film that he's just getting revenge yeah the fact that he's guilty uh he's not just getting revenge he's this is how sick and twisted of a character that that we got is yeah he's killed your friends he's made you feel bad about it he's brought you to a point where you're gonna you're gonna realize that feeling bad about it was was a pretty stupid thing and it's gonna be too late uh, yeah. And he does a great job with it. Um, overall, the uh, the film plays it pretty well. Oh, are there perfect things about it? We're going to give our our pros and cons at the uh, at, at the end at the end of this review. Yeah. So why don't we get into that? Because we talked a lot about just you want anything else you want to like touch on? Touch on about the plot or anything itself? Yeah. Because uh, we're, we're going to get into a pros and cons part of it. Uh, I guess. Um, 
if if we're going into like the final pros and cons stuff, I will say before I uh, I do it, there are some really good concepts in this film. Micro sleep yeah. and the micro. I could go into like that's why I didn't want to wait into the pros and cons because I want to actually say it. The micro sleep scene itself is awesome. It is probably one of my favorite sequences in the series. Period. As he's coming down and like it's switching back and forth so you see him like glide his hand on the thing and then it switches into like uh, as he like brings it down uh, she wakes up again like for a second because she's going back and forth between the micro sleep. So the thing's on the shelf because she's in a uh, shopper's essentially a drugstore uh, and like the things fall down because it's fading back in and out. And when he slashes her, the blood comes up and it hits uh, on the things on the shelf because she's went back in again. It's, it's really, really well done. Um, does anybody remember a scene, by the way, where a computer says, entering sleep mode? I remember that scene. It wasn't in there. It was a really clever scene. It was the other really clever scene. This the micro sleep scene is excellent, and the entering sleep uh, mode scene was uh, was really good. If it exists, if I'm not crazy, <laughs> uh, there's a lot of really cool back and forth dream stuff, like when Chris has her dream in the school, and she's like, "Please wake up! Please wake up! Please wake up!" Uh, and then suddenly everyone bursts into de to ash. It's really well done. Uh, there's a lot of really well done scenes. And Jack Earl Haley is awesome. And I don't think there's any time where he says any lines where I'm like, Freddy wouldn't say that. That's stupid. This is dumb. <laughs> Why does he have a beard under that mask? See? Like, there's none of those scenes. Uh, every single one of his lines, uh, my favorite, of course, being the, the, when, uh, I think it's Jesse is walking, like, running around, and he sees, like, he understands what's going on, he's like, he's like, oh, God. And Freddy just appears behind him, and he's like, no, just me. And I'm like, Yeah! <laughs> And then he immediately follows it up with the... My favorite line. Yeah, with your favorite line, the... Why are you screaming? I haven't even cut you yet. And I'm like... Mm. He, he is Freddy. He's... He's like... He's more vicious sounding, but like... He's still like... Like, there's a couple times where he's like very aggressive, vicious sounding. But even Freddy could do that. Like, Robert Englund's Freddy. Like, when he's like beating on uh, Quentin and he's like... You can't save her. But then he immediately follows it up with the, uh, just a moment, your girlfriend's calling. It's cool. It is, it's good. I like his lines. And he, though he seems very more, like, sexual predatory, which makes sense for this writing. Well, it was originally supposed to be, but he had to take that up. Yeah. <clears throat> something that was going on in the, uh, in the media at the time. And I'm used to the more, like, <clears throat> I, I, this is the <clears throat> series I've watched the most, I mentioned. This is the series I like the most. I'm used to, like, your traditional, Welcome to prime time, bitch! And then smashing their head through That's it. a good line. That's a really good That's line. That's a really oh, good line. line. Um, he's more subdued, but he doesn't feel any less Freddy. It was improv, too. Was it? Yeah. I really liked it. There's, hmm. like... And he does... And he does fit with the original, like, original movie Freddy, who was a little bit more reserved, too. With the, like, this is your god, and, like, cutting his... So, here out. we go. We've talked about some pretty awesome aspects of the film. We've, we've actually re-looked into this film that we really originally hated, and we've said a lot of great things about it. Now, let's get to the things that the people here probably really want to hear about. Pros and cons. What we don't like. Oh. Yeah. Because <clears throat> we pretty much said all the pros. Yeah, we, we have said all the pros. <clears throat> Man, I... S I gotta go on this right away. The makeup is atrocious. He's not it literally scary. looks like he was like when I'm watching it this time after the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Michael Bay films that come out, and I'm I'm not going to say that, that I really hated those films. I actually 
kind of dug the first one at least. I haven't seen second I haven't one. Seen that, yeah. uh, like certain parts of it, but the turtles didn't look the greatest. And this is it's it's that case again. I mean, they kind of said originally they're gonna make him look more like uh like a burn victim, which I uh, I don't think's a good idea. Yeah, uh, that's kind of not what what the Freddy thing was all about. Yes, one he of the was things burned, that I've always assumed. Uh, just I've just assumed with Freddy is that this is his dream world. He's making himself look <clears throat> scarier than he does. That's why he changes every film. But he's not scary. scary. One, so no, no that, that's what I mean. Here, <clears throat> he just is a burn victim. I've always just assumed Freddy, the type of guy who can literally change anything in his world, Actually, would he, make himself look scarier. He dialed that back, too. Uh, they didn't go with, with as much of a burn victim as you were originally going to go in the remake. They actually even dolled back the burn victim part of it. Right. So they thought that was going to be too disturbing as well. I kind of agree with that there, so, but I, I still don't think that this is a make that works. I want it works. to disturb me, though. I, I want it to be a scary face. It, but it's not a scary face, and that's the thing. It, it is like if there's a 15 age Ninja Turtle, uh, you know, <laughs> that, got, <laughs> that, got, that got, you know, a bit of Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael... Michelangelo, Scarface, Freddy. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what that's what it comes across as for me. He's like he's almost like kind of turtle esque in the in the, in the thing, um, and almost that like kind of like tur teenage ninja turtles, who, like along with Turtle Man from Master of the Skies, that horrible horrible film. Um, uh, I will say that he, one th he's really good at like playing with the gloves. He's really good at like speaking. He, this Freddy doesn't change the world a lot. Like, there's a lot of shifting between worlds, and there's some, there's a couple, like, cool, like, snowing in her bedroom scene, and the poof, the thing scene, and I know that he is trying to lead them to places, but these places always, they, they are more dreamlike, but, like, Freddy's dreams were always more, and I Fantastic. know we're not supposed to be comparing to the original. It's always more fantastical, yeah. It's always more... Like, the boiler room is <clears throat> usually surging with fire. You see, the like, the dead kids, or, like, it's... the area leading down. It's very... This is why it's my favorite series. This... <sighs> Halloween is a thriller. Friday the 13th is a slasher. To me, this is a horror fantasy. And I don't have so. the fantasy elements as much as it is... In the other films, and I know we're not supposed to be comparing, Consider it, but it is a thing about dreams, and I've seen a lot of other non-Freddy movies about dreams. Dreams should be more fantastical, and if it's a nightmare, it should definitely be more scary. He should manipulate the world more. He doesn't need to change into a giant, like snake that comes out of a floor. That's pretty cool, though. Yeah, it is really cool. <clears throat> he doesn't need to change in anything. Well, he, yes, he, does he should probably change into something. <laughs> but but something more than just, like, the one scene, is a, it's a callback to Seven, when they're in the hospital, and uh, and the doctor's like, uh, don't, like, like getting ready of things to knock around. She's like, don't worry, this won't hurt one bit. And she, like, pulls the glove up, and then she freaks out. Oh, that's the one it. scene where I'm like, that's what Freddy would do. He, the, <clears throat> but, and it's, 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 ex, it's accented by the fact that the whole film, and I love this, this should have been in the in the pros section, I forgot to say it, is about how sleep deprivation, which would affect anyone attacked by Freddy, is bad, and how it affects your mental state. <clears throat> but instead of playing with it more like he would, he's more aggressive with it, so instead, most of the time, it'd be, it'll be like, like, oh, dad's gone to sleep. Woo! Whereas... In the older ones, and like that one scene, yeah. he's a little bit more like surprised. Like there's more, yeah, he does shock go, and that's one thing manipulation I kind of with it. The whole like bah type thing it didn't he does that a lot. didn't really need to do that as much. I know he's what, aggressive, but he does that way too much. Yeah, uh, one thing I can say, and to play devil's advocate, because I did do originally kind of like agree with the fact that I would like to see more fantastical, especially nowadays where the effects can actually afford that. Mm -hmm. uh, is that this is the first film. And we are yeah. kind of like, there is like a specific journey that we are getting. And when we think of, of Nightmare on Elm Street, yeah. and we think of those fantastical aspects, 
usually worth looking at the uh, at the later films. My, my it, favorites, uh, which I, I won't three. say because it progresses. We're not gonna, it, progre it progresses to that to that point. Up our other video. Yeah, so, I don't want to mess up my other video and say what my favorites are. But so, you'll be surprised. Yeah, but you check, it, click that buzzword <laughs> thing. What video does? Which movie does Matthew like the best? You'll never believe it. Um, but, but yeah, it, it progresses to that. And I mean, like I think that if you would have went on with the franchise, it would have eventually progressed to that state. I would, uh, as we all know, the makeup in the original Nightmare on Street you it a bit, like, yeah, changed throat. The course of uh, other films, anyway, with um, yeah. many different like people doing their own takes on Freddy, so it wouldn't be uh, much of a change or a stretch to actually take what is a pretty a bad makeup job here and take Jack Earl Haley, who I think does a really good job under the the makeup, yeah. and actually like improve that. So a lot of the things that are that are in here could have been improved upon in a sequel, uh, which uh, we're not going to get now because they're already. Going Though, through, to be fair, remake this again. The to be fair, we can't even again. say like, "Oh, well, it'll be better in the sequel" because we're, we're bl they, based on this movie. But that's what you got to do. You have to go like sometimes yeah. with, with yeah. that. You have to. You have to. You have I will to say, I want to know what they would have done with the, like more because there was some like good stuff here. There's a lot of good stuff here. A lot more than we thought. Um, <clears> I yeah. will say, we once both again, pretty much went into this one with pretty low expectations again. Yeah. Uh, we had seen the movie before, and maybe that helped out a bit too. When we're watching this film. We I don't I don't think I there was a time that I actually got bored. No, watching this movie. That's that's that's, that's an important aspect. We weren't bored. We never, we're never bored. We're never like looking away or like like I remember looking down on my iPad to like to uh because like I got a message and I but I kind of was like glancing yeah. back up as I was reading because I didn't want. There was miss a couple times on. when you were reading where I was like, Dad, take a look at the screens. This part where they do this actually really clever scene, and I was like, Oh wow, I'm actually. Pointing out scenes in this film where I'm like, check it out. <clears throat> this is the part where they do the clever scene. I had expected this to, to come on here and give this a much more negative review. Uh, but uh, if another thing I want to do a con on this one is Katie Cassidy's character is so likable that this is a person whose journey you're hoping to follow. Yeah. I feel like she, at, if she didn't become the like protagonist she at least should have lasted longer i like, feel I know that she's pretty much playing the man of wise tina character yeah uh, but uh it's she's not called tina so there's no reason for us to like well, assume that uh christina christina oh, i never thought of that actually good yeah. good, good, good call. Uh, <laughs> but uh i don't know I, maybe it's just because i think katie cassie is super cute but i th i thought yeah would have been a, a good job i thought she could have done a I, I don't so. oh that's another thing we really like I remember when we first watched the film we were like oh man I don't like Nancy mostly because we liked Katie Cassidy so much yeah, she's but this time around we're like yeah hot. Nancy's fine like Nancy's a lot more likable than I thought uh, but Quentin is so much more likable <laughs> oh aren't you afraid what the adrenaline's gonna do to you well actually it's kind of the least of my worries right now I uh it's you know what it's a pretty good movie for a remake it's Maybe it's maybe not like the best, but it's it's definitely not Halloween. <laughs> um, I won't say anything about any other remakes we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be reviewing because we're gonna not reviewing them now. Uh, we're reviewing them later in a different video, and if I tell you now, you're not gonna watch it because you'll already know. Um, but uh, I probably like this one more than some others that people will be surprised about. Alright. Now here's my thoughts on, on this one right here. Uh, Annette Marie Elm Street, when I, when I originally saw this movie, I actually didn't like it at all. I watched it again a while back, uh, about, about a year and a half ago, and again, I was kind of not sure. I watched it here tonight, and I'm going to and I'm going to be completely straightforward and blunt. Uh, it's it's good. It's not a bad remake. The storyline follows through. The narrative goes where it's supposed to go. The nothing seems like completely out of place or odd. Uh, Freddy doesn't do the Fantastic Dream stuff that he would do in later sequence in later films. But this isn't later films. This is taking it over right back from the beginning. The makeup is uh, is a letdown. 
but still the makeup over the over this core this series of of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street films would change drastically so many different times. Uh, there, anything that was kind of like not the greatest could have been, like, could have de could I definitely been fixed through. That was but but greatest. here's the thing, yeah. nothing was that. Well, nothing in this yeah. film comes off as bad. Uh, it, it it has a great cast. The direction by Samuel Bayer, who what what else did he direct? Well, well, I can tell you one thing he directed. Uh, Nirvana's video smells about, smells like Team Spirit. Team oh. Spirit. Yeah, he was like a music video director, and it really kind of shows he has this visual thing. But unlike other people, Rob <laughs> Zombie, uh, he can actually um, direct like uh, these He's got people a bad into cough some. There. Yeah, I know. Into a like really some... bad, awful <laughs> cough that should stop. <laughs> stop making <laughs> movies. Uh, no, but I went into this tonight. I'll be honest, we had looked at a few different ones to to review. Matt decided on this one. I was pushing hard on that one because I really like that series and I wanted to revisit it. I was dreading watching this movie. I could tell. You're like repeatedly being like, well, there's these other ones. And I'm yeah. like, I'm like, no, I really like Nightmare on Elm Street, the original series. I want to give this one a shot because I've for years I've been trying to like, like really piece together what I would want for a Nightmare on Elm Street like remake and you know so what we this go. isn't bad no as far as it goes this is my final thought on this one here as a reboot goes after all the crap i've given this movie over the years i'm gonna say it right now uh rob zombie's halloween was an awful film yeah that was, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> i like the end of all of our reviews i like this film i really enjoyed this film i enjoyed the actors that were in this film uh i thought the makeup wasn't the, wasn't the best but that was probably my biggest complaint and throughout this entire film. I liked the way it was plotted. I liked the way that it was acted. I liked the way that he followed. And finally, I got it. I understood what they were, go what they were doing with Freddy. I got it. I, uh, it it kind of it just came to me. I'm like, okay, I completely understand where they're going. I had One of my biggest gripes with this film had been, hey, wouldn't it have been a cool twist if Freddy had been innocent all along? doesn't work for this Friday. It doesn't. It really doesn't work. And uh, I was so caught up in my own, like, kind of like my own armchair, like, writer. Uh, my own, like, ego of, like, hey, I have a really clever idea. How come they did not use my clever idea? Because you know, at the end of the day, you know what? Their idea was clever. And that is uh, my thoughts on, on Nightmare on Elm Street. Does this make it as a reboot? This, yes, it does. It's a really good reboot that has been maligned and, you know, put down for many years by me, by many other people. Probably I many. think it deserves to be rediscovered. This is a really good film. I did, I actually really enjoyed this film. And you know what? This edition of this film, one thing that even when I was not a big fan of this movie, I remember, well, this is a really cool case, as you can see me doing that. This has something called a maniacal movie mode, like cutting alternate opening, uh, alternate ending, additional scenes, oh, uh, a ton of stuff. You you know if you want to, you just if you're not watching anything else tonight, just watch this in Maniacal Maniacal movie mode. It's fucking. Great. I might do that. It's really good. So is it alternate opening and ending? Oh yeah, they got all kinds of stuff there. They talk about they even go through all the sequences where uh where, where they're doing like uh, throwbacks. Like you know right here you One see thing that's that I, uh... that's actually she's wearing Glenn's uh, sweater. Glenn, so that, uh, the Glenn War. One uh, thing that I, I will say that I, I did find that was a... Uh, you didn't mind it as much. I found it as a negative. I thought the ending was a bit too Final Destination with it's like in your face. I liked it. I mean, it was a throwback to the original one. Is it? It wasn't I as didn't bad as like the effects in the original, but the original was done in 1984. So you I didn't kind of remember that. it as well. Like, I was like, oh, this is a really, really over the top. But when I saw it again, like, it's, it's cool. For one... He's actually, he's finally violent and not just stabbing someone, so it's cool. Well, yeah. I mean, he is stabbing someone, but it's more, like, it's creative. It's awesome visual. And I really do like the, her walk, like, taking a step in front of it, and he's the shadow, or he's the reflection. It was cool, but I, I did find it a bit over the top. I do want to see what they're ultimate ending and stuff. Do, do you think she gets, uh, like, as a dummy, gets pulled through a tiny window? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Uh, you gotta watch it. Uh, yeah. Here's the thing. Uh... It's a great addition to own. If you're a horror fan, uh, you should definitely should own this uh, this here Blu-ray. It's a great Blu-ray set. 
There you go. Uh, I know a lot of you guys are probably going to disagree with uh, with me on like this because a lot of people, this movie does get a lot of hate. And at the end of the day, let's be honest, these are all movies. All, our, all these review things are subjective, but this is my opinion. And, uh, and honestly, our, before you immediately jump on it and be like, oh, that's... I remember when I saw it back in... When was this put out? 2010, actually. 2010? Really? Yeah, it was six years. It's now. been six years? Yeah. It feels so much longer. Um... Uh, give it saying. another shot. You're yeah, like, say give another you've probably shot. not seen it in six years. It's been over half a decade. Go watch it. Come, you know what? When I saw it, I was, what, like six? You're 15. 15. I was 15. I'm watching it now as an adult, and I like it. I like it, a, I like it quite a bit. And you could, too, if you just believe. <laughs> Don't go into this movie knowing it's half about, the battle. Don't thinking about the other films that are that are in the franchise. Uh, don't compare to the first. And you know it's really easy to do to compare it. He's not Robert England. Robert England is a fantastic actor. But nobody's He's an Robert amazing England. actor. He, and he did it in a way that 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 only he could do it in a type of film that only he could do it in. Wes Craven's movie it can't be beaten. It is the film that it is. This movie do isn't trying to make you forget that A Nightmare on Elm Street, the 1984 edition, existed. Jackie Earl Haley is in no way trying to make you forget that Robert England was there. That it's that does nothing. That, but that Halloween should have done. It's paying tribute and doing its own thing at the same time. Exactly, and that's what a really that's good all you can ask from. That's a what remake. a really good remake should do. And this has been the first edition of Reboot Theater, Remake Theater. So if you like that, please let us know because we. More. Because we're, we're going to do more anyway. We're going to do this later. <laughs> we got a lot of remakes. What are we going to do with them? We got to we gotta watch the remakes. It's been a long time. And some stuff that's going to be pretty controversial. We're going to be watching Prom Night remake. Uh, a lot of people already know some of my thoughts on that one there. It's going to be interesting to go back and watch that. We're going to be watching, obviously, the Friday the 13th. Reimagining. You're reimagining. It's not technically a remake. Uh, you're going to get to hear my thoughts. I think I've watched that more recent than you have. Maybe. Uh, and you're going to hear our thoughts on that. I've got some interesting thoughts on that. Boobs. Uh, you're going to see Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the remake. And you're going to see it? We're actually going to We're going to put it on. <laughs> no, it's yeah, no. Be no, copyright we're... be damned. We're yeah. just going to have a... going to no. pull show the whole thing. But uh, no, we're, we're going to go through uh, a lot of these remakes here. Yeah. So hopefully... Maybe we'll end up liking them as much as we did this one. Maybe we'll even get Maybe. some. Maybe there'll be Halloween. Some again. of the lower ones, like uh, stuff like Tool, Toolbox Murders and stuff like that. Yeah. You guys give us some suggestions of remakes that you Absolutely. think that we should rewatch. So this remake rewatch, hey, that's even a better. Wow. <laughs> Halfway through, we're gonna think of a new name. Yeah, there we go. Remake rewatch. Got Thanks like a, for watching, like a guys. Slash in there, like remake, re. If we should do colors, we could have one be red and one be blue. We really <laughs> okay. Know. I think we've got as far as we count on Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> yeah. Love this movie actually a lot better than I thought it was originally. It's not a Nightmare on Elm Street the original. It's not supposed to be Nightmare on Elm Street the original, but as a remake, as a reimagining of the franchise, it gets off to a great start. It's mm. a shame that didn't go uh, farther, but he, he had big shoes to fill. I think he did a pretty good job of doing that. And uh, Jackie Earl Haley had nothing to be ashamed of. I don't think that he was just playing Rorschach in this one. His uh, voice does but it, it throw does, me off a little bit sometimes, but Rorschach I really like voice. him. But that's the thing. That's his voice. He can't yeah. really do He's already done that. that Stop having voice. your voice. Yes, you get Yeah, so yeah. Jackie Earl Haley come a long way from Bad News Bears. I can say that much right now. Thanks for watching, guys. This who, has been... Who expected this to be 50 minutes of us not shitting on this film, huh? Not me, actually. Like a full hour of uh, pretty much of us... Saying the film's a good idea. It's yeah. good stuff. I'm, I'm actually surprised. Yeah. Are you surprised, guys? Thanks for watching. Uh, I know you probably expected kind of like a, more of a thrashing and more of a humorous one. But uh, in this case, uh, that's going to be the case in, in many of these reviews. But in this case, Remake Rewatch Episode 1 of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street as a remake, it gets a thumbs up. It gets, it's, it, gets the, uh, it's, it gets the freshness too. All right. What were you going to do? What were you going to do like something slashy on me? No, I was waiting for you to say your time for tea line. Oh. Because I'm like, I've, I've thought of my sting a lot. Well, my voice is actually going, and honestly, it is, seriously. Time for tea. Final con. No Roseanne Barr. There's no mm. right there. Why would they even remake the film with that? Man? Yeah, I know. Yes.
Actually, my hand is actually really hurting after wearing that the whole time. <laughs> is it really? Yeah, like okay. there was like mm. metal scrapings on my fingernails and everything. <laughs> Thank you for watching the after for watching for the after credit sequence where, uh, for once, Matthew got his uh, his conversational thing to yeah! actually come through. There I guess you did. That's how I feel like it should. It, it's more of a good, even though our reviews are always very like loose. Anyways, it's more <clears> of a connecting thing between between me and you. You know, just me and you. Um. I thought I'd put this out there. Uh, it's probably in one of our older videos if you want to give mm. us more views or something. <laughs> uh, but uh, appreciate but if, if, if you don't want to go that, you can just guess. Uh, and guess what my favorite uh, Nightmare on Elm Street films are. And Dad's favorite Nightmare on Elm Street films. Yeah, actually. You we have, have very this. differing views on actually which of our favorites are. So The one was grew up watching in the theater. The other one kind of found them through uh, what used to be called Scream TV. Yeah. It was a, channel, a horror channel we had here in Canada. So, you know, feel free to like, uh, please give us a like. If you are not subscribed, uh, we, uh, we do really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and uh, let people know that we're out there. Uh, you know, just give us a hand. <laughs> you guy. I had to. Oh. I just had to do it. Uh, here's a hint that won't help anyone. I actually, I was, I was Freddy last year for Halloween. And when I went to do the makeup, I did the makeup based off of the design from the film that I liked the most. So there you go. Uh, if you guys, if you were one of the five people who were at the ha the Halloween party with me, where uh, pretty yeah. really drunk, then <laughs> <laughs> drunk really. Uh, uh, well, sit on Freddy's lap. You know you wanna. <clears throat> I, I had a bald cap on when I went there. I woke up without one. Um, <laughs> But if you were one of those five people, you'll know what it was. Before or this, if you're if you're my sister watching this, we we right. before this hand here gets too fresh with me, we have we, we have had this. <laughs> oh no! It needs its baby. Yeah, it does need it back. back. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. For me right now, I am the movie professor. It is time for tea. Oh, my voice is going really. It's time for tea. Uh, uh I'm your boyfriend now, Nancy. That's classic. It is. But it's in the new one, too. It is, eh? I know what's what. Nobody said I wasn't a fresh fellow. <laughs> Thanks for watching.